having three miscarriages and obviously the ectopic, I couldn't enjoy it at all, could I? I was, every day I was worried and checking for bleeding and panicking and every little thing I'd be on the phone to you or my mum and is mm. this normal, is that yeah. normal? <laughs> Well, when I first met Sam, she was like, um, you know, I've got a baby. I was like, oh, you, yeah, pardon, you what? So um, when I first came round, she's like, I'm going to introduce you to my baby. I'm like, oh, dear, right. <laughs> so anyway, turn up and it, um, he's a snake. But yeah, like I say, he grew up on me very fast. And uh, yeah, he's, he's a funny you still little... still haven't held him, though, have you? No, I still not held him, but he's been shedding quite a lot recently, so... Yeah, just not had the time really. I don't think it prepares you for having a baby, no. having a reptile. I think it's going to be good for the baby, you know, <laughs> to kind of grow up, you know, around reptiles. It's good to have that knowledge and, you know. We said Ethan's first pet's going to be a lizard. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to try my best to do it without any pain relief. I like with the tattoos and the piercings, I like, I like to feel, you know, what every little feeling feels like. God, my head nearly went with that one. Went where? Out of space. Oh, not so quick. Epidural, it's, it's like one of my worst nightmares, just not being able to feel any part of your body. Yeah. It's just awful. I think it was about a month and a half after we got together that I found out I was pregnant. There was a lot of blood and I went well. I, I just thought I was miscarrying because I've had miscarriages before yeah. and with other relationships. It turned out that I had an ectopic pregnancy, which was a big shocker. <laughs> got pregnant quite quick again within a couple of months, which wasn't expected. Oh, God. Having three miscarriages and obviously the ectopic, I couldn't enjoy it at all, could I? I was, every day I was worried and checking for bleeding and panicking and every little thing I'd be on the phone to you or my mum and mm. is this normal, is that yeah. normal? <laughs> How good? Yeah, that's fine. That's within normal limits. Yay! <laughs> as much as it was a horrible experience, almost shit on anyone, it definitely, you know, and was one of the things that brought us close together and, you know, I think you knew that I would be there for you again. Just kind of set it in stone for me that we're going to be together forever. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds really sappy. It does a bit, yeah. Well done. But yeah. yeah. Hopefully we'll see you back here. In a good few hours. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> it was decided for me to be in that room in a heartbeat. Sam said, Mum, you'll be with me straight away. As soon as she found out she was pregnant, Mum, you'll be with me. So I said, Yeah, can't so well. Fine, I'll be with you. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know if I should have the wheelchair. Do you want it? I think so. All oh, right, all right. She keeps saying she's got a high pain threshold, which I don't think she has. She, she whinges if she's got a headache. <laughs> Hello, St James's Delivery Sweet Midwife. Come in. As a woman growing up, you accept that if you want to have children, it's painful. And as a mother, if you've done that, you accept that your child will have to do it as well, or your daughter will have to do it as well. Yeah. Love you. Love you too. Oh, I love you so much. Love you too, Mum. <laughs> can we take some of this morphine yeah. home, please? Yeah, I was just going to say, can we have a few with it? Yeah. <laughs> She's smiling and saying she loves us. I know. Something wrong. Teenage years, absolutely horrendous. She decided when me and her dad got divorced, she wanted to go live with her dad, which was really heartbreaking. Really heartbreaking. I didn't speak to my mum for a long time and then my dad just couldn't cope me one day and I'd just gone off the rails and he brought me down to Leeds one day and just said to my mum, you know, there you go, your time now, you sort her out. 
We were arguing every day. She was stealing money. She was lying. She was drinking. God knows what else she was doing. At first, it was like oh, a typical teenager, you know, running away for the night, spending a night at a friend's house. But then it became more serious, and I spent two years on and off the streets, you know. I was in tears all the time. I couldn't eat. I was thinking, of she eating? What? Where is she? Where is she going? What's she doing? The more I ran away the more she'd get on at me and, you know, the more I wanted freedom, that's all, all I've ever wanted, freedom, in there. <laughs> oh, it hurts. It she left home on the 16th birthday um, and she just turned her life around, but I was with her every step of the way. If she ever needed me, she was a phone call away. Mm. You just learn to accept the person that they are and and love them. Sometimes I've not liked the things that she's done or the way that she's looked, but I've always loved her. My relationship with my mum now, God, we're just inseparable. I was like, she's on holiday and I miss her and she goes away for a week and I just, I don't feel right, do I? I feel like my left arm's gone or something. I'm very, very proud of Sam and I tell her that all the time. How things have changed, you know, she's, just amazing. Really proud. Yeah, I still can't believe I'm gonna be a mum. Mm. You're excited now. I'm really, really excited, but it's, it's scary, scary it's knowing fun. that I'm gonna be in charge of him. You do a wonderful job, do it, all right? I feel love for him already, really. Of course you do. Loads of love, but it's picking him up, changing him. It'll all just kick in, you'll know what to do. Hmm. This baby for Sam is going to be a new life, a new beginning, a new, another chapter in her life, really. I could never imagine that Sam's life would be this good now. Never. This is just like the end of that black tunnel now, she's just blossomed. <laughs> You've just had enough. Come on. I just feel, as a mum, really, really worried. Really scared because I know how painful it is. I just worry that my baby's in pain. If I could take that pain away for her, do it in a heartbeat, but I can't. It's just the only thing that worries me, because I know what it's like. Okay. Sad, can't be it bad. You are? You are coping. Not broken down, you've been. I think you would have coped without an epidural, but if I'd have told you you can't have an epidural, you might have hit me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 it's oh, it's lovely. Oh. 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 Should we put him up? Do <laughs> 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 you want him up on your chest? Are you ready for him? Look at him, he's gorgeous, he's only did you. Look at his little face. Oh, he's so tiny. He's tiny. <laughs> he's huge, but he's so tiny. Say no, no, mummy, hello, dad, hello, granny. Oh, I'm so proud of you too. I'm so proud of you both. You both let me share this for a short minute. Hello. Hello. All this time through the miscarriages and the ectopic pregnancy, I just never ever thought I'd finally get the chance to be a mum ever, and it's really made it special. Oh, Be there to support your child no matter what they throw at you, even if they do run away and call you all sorts of names. I'm always going to be there for my little boy. So your daddy? Hello, mister. Six pound, one and a bit. <gasps> I said six pound two. I think we've got the right amount of crazy to be a good family. Every family needs a bit of crazy. I don't think there'll be ever a, be a boring moment. Just 
be there for your child. That's all you can do as a parent. You're there forever. Don't stop when they've left home. Just always there. When I was nine, my mom died, uh, giving birth to my younger sister. We were living in this farm in Colombia. I don't know if she bled to death, or I don't really know what. The only thing is like, it was her and me. So I was only like a little boy, so I couldn't do anything. I remember seeing my mom asking for help, you know, get someone, run, run, run. My grandmother said, you know, your mom is dead, you know, she's not coming back. So that went like the world went down. If something goes wrong, um, I will definitely, definitely bring back. Yeah, I think I'll bring back a lot of memories. <laughs> Welcome to Leves. We met on the internet. In the time I was living in Mexico and he was living in England, but he is from Colombia. Colombia. <laughs> You're all right, you need to stop. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Come on, Belen. Fuerza, pa, pa, pa. <laughs> as soon as I saw his picture, I did like his looking, and he was really handsome. <laughs> <laughs> the more we talk, the more we start to liking each other. And then I just decided one day I have to go and meet her, you know. First time I went to Mexico, I met her, fell in love with her. The second time, and I proposed to her to be my wife. And then the third time, we got married. And then, and then I'm here. <laughs> Espérate que, a que, a que primero me chequen y luego ya haces eso. Tú tranquila, yo soy multitasking. No. Una entrevista de un minuto, pues. Es que te dices muchas cosas. <risa> bueno, señores, señores, estamos acá, tenemos un minuto para hablar con la señorita Solís Domínguez, acá desde México. Bueno, ¿qué quiere que decir? Un saludito aquí a Dieguito antes de que nazca. A ver, rápido, rápido. Yo quiero que nazca rápido. Quiere que nazca rápido. Yo escucho a Diego, yo a ver, ¿qué más? ¿Qué más le quieres decir a tu hijo que está acá en esta panzota? Que ya quiero ver la carita hermosa. Sí, sí, sí. ¿Qué le quieres decir antes de que venga? Esto es lo importante. Te amo, cosita hermosa, si me duela, te amo. Ya. Cualquier grosería que diga, cualquier tochada que diga, no le va a poner nada yo. Que su mamá se va a transformar en otra tres veces peor de lo que es ahorita. ¿no? Oh. It was love first time. You know, the things that I did for her was crazy. You know, I never thought about the money. I never thought about going to another country. I never thought about the dangers. I've never thought about anything. The only thing that was on my mind was belling, 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 belling. Bueno, aquí su papá es de Inglaterra. Dale un saludo, mijo, que salga bien. Allá estás en esa panza. I was born in a small village in Colombia. My childhood was not the best one that um, a child could have. There will be days with no food. There will be days with no water. I came to the UK when I was 16. That was a claim in a political asylum. England is my home now. Because uh, I've got everything here, I've got a um, house, I've got a job. So yeah, I own a lot of things to England. You know, I want Diego to grow up here. I came here because William was living here. I didn't really think like it was, oh, I'm going to Europe, or it's going to be, oh, it's going to be the best place in the world. I didn't really have that, that idea. I had the idea that I was going to be with him to feel that this was my home, like in here, in England. It took me about a year. That's the time like when I started like learning the English, the, the language properly. So that's when I understand people, like start talking with them, like going to shops, like asking for help and everything. I'm really happy. So happy to be here in this country. There you go, try that one. Mm. 
Well, um, shall we get you onto the bed and I'll examine you now? Am I all right to go ahead? Yeah. Okay. I think you're still about the same. Okay. So, I'm just going to have a little word with one of the other midwives and one of the doctors and we'll just decide what to do. She's still the same. She looks as if she's doing something. But it's exactly the same. I can't believe she hasn't progressed. Yo no sé qué pasa. Las contracciones las tengo bien. No, no, me estaba moviendo. Hi. So, the plan is for us to move room and start you on the drip and it just accelerates your labour. It'll make your contractions stronger and more frequent. There's no risk to her or the baby? Nothing's wrong with you or the baby. All your observations are normal. When I was nine, my mum died uh, giving birth to my younger sister. We were living in this farm in Colombia. I don't know if she bled to death, or I don't really know what. The only thing is, like, it was her and me. So I was only like a little boy, so I couldn't do anything. I remember seeing my mom asking for help. You know, get someone, run, run, run. My grandmother said, you know, your mom is dead. You know, she's not coming back. So that went like the world went down. If something goes wrong, um, I will definitely, definitely bring back. Yeah, I think I'll bring back a lot of memories. I'll be praying, you know, just a child will be born straight away. Oye, Monica, le quede, por favor. ¿Será que pueden orar por mi esposa y por mi hijo? Está muy lenta, entonces la van a tener que acelerar. Entonces yo no sé si eso es grave o no grave, pero no, no. Yo estoy pendiente del corazoncito del bebé. ¿Cómo vas a pensar en esto todo? Vamos a empujar contigo. Padre Santo, te pedimos, Señor, que seas tu bendición de la vida. Señor, te pido que seas tu cuidándola, Señor. Dale, dale alivio en estos momentos, Señor. Dale, Señor. Es hard to have your baby in another country because you don't have your family here. I do miss my family really much. Now, with my pregnancy, I wish my mom could be with me and my dad. So the fact that showing my son to my dad is going to be really bad because I wish he could see him because I know he's going to be his happiness, but he's not going to see him and my mom. We, we, we're trying to, to go to Mexico like next year, like before he's more than one year, and then he could see his grandson and his grandma. <laughs> Don't worry about him. He's absolutely fine in there. And I know it's not what you planned, but in labor, you can't really make plans, can you? Things change all the time. William is the love of my life. He's my everything, my strange. He gave everything to me, and I gave everything to him. Having a baby is, you know, like the gift from our love. <laughs> I'm really protective of William because I know he's really sensitive 
and I think if I don't protect him, nobody's going to protect him. Keep doing what you're doing, that's it. Hello, ah, Mexicana. Doing so Fantastic. well. Fantastic. All my thoughts are on Diego now. He'll be the world to me. If he's like falling, I'll be there to catch him. You know, I just want to be there all the time. Go on, breathe slowly, slowly. Go on, breathe, breathe. Oh, keep it, that's it, the cooper, that's it. Keep it going. Go on, keep it going. Keep it going. The biggest difference between Diego and I are that he will always have a roof, he will always have food, he will always have clothes, he will always have everything that he needs. I wasn't going to tell him at the start because I was like 11 weeks gone and I was like, we weren't talking at the time and I thought, oh no, he's not going to think it's his. Being told you're going to be a dad for the first time, it's like, Everything in your life pauses for a millisecond. Being in a big family, you grow up watching your dad look after little children. And you just think, am I going to be able to do it? To be honest, I think I'll be able to do as good a job as what my dad did for me. So just hopefully I can live up to the expectations of what people think. Well, we met last year, were we last year? Yeah, yeah. last year. <laughs> <laughs> I should know that. <sighs> it was stood outside Top Yates is having a cig and I was like, you're quite at you and he went, oh my shine, I was just like and then I walked away from him and I thought, oh no, and then I said to my friend, oh, I don't think it was gonna happen and then just got to Oceana really and then got drinking. And then we got drinking <laughs> and then we just started talking and then we had a kiss. Four days later, I think went to the cinema. Can't remember what we saw. But, yeah, it was good. I've got tickets upstairs. I've got a scrapbook of everything. I'm right sad like that. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Since then, we've been inseparable, except from when we broke up, but... Mm, yeah. I found everybody, everybody knows. Oh. I'm on my way down. I said, there's no point yet. I says, where we are, you're only my one person. <sighs> um, was that mine? Trying to be safe, she forgot to take a pill, yep. and the condom split. I went to the doctors and he turned around and went, you're pregnant? I was just like, what? <laughs> Cried, I was in so much shock, though, because I didn't have no inkling whatsoever. I was sat there like, no, I can't be. Breathe with it, sweetheart, breathe. When she first told me, I was a bit upset because I thought she'd have been bit more um, a bit more aware and what I was when I was having Claire. Can't give you cowpa like I used to do when you were in pain. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna miss made in Chelsea. Yeah. I'm gonna miss made in Chelsea. Have you put on a card. Oh, Gosh, calm down that put your clock already. Mm -hmm. Miss Dickinson's real deal and everything. Oh, look, 16 and pregnant, so. It's one thing I don't need to watch. <laughs> now I've come to terms with it. I'm very, very excited. I can't wait now. I just want to see him. It's a long time since we've had a baby around in the house. Um, the last baby was in here was Claire. <laughs> I 
knew my mum would understand because she had two kids at my age. So I suppose if she's gone through it, she knows I'll get through it. She's always been there for me as my mum. Everywhere I go, I, I, she goes with me, or everywhere she goes, I go with her. We might as well be best friends. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell him at the start because I was like 11 weeks gone. And I was like, we weren't talking at the time. And I thought, oh no, he's not going to think it's his. I was actually playing on my brother's PlayStation, <laughs> playing on playing online, shooting shooting people. So, and then I get a phone call, and she's like, "I'm pregnant," and I was just like, "Okay," and then I went silent for about two or three minutes. Being told you're going to be a dad for the first time, it's like... Everything in your life pauses for like a millisecond and then your stomach tightens and knots up and it's like... You've got a stomach ache and what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, what's going to happen next, sort of feeling, so... Yeah, proper shocked. From thinking about being a dad, from being just me. It's like, I've got to grow up. No, I can't do what I want when I want. So, yeah, it's scary. You ready then? My mum's always said, I'm cutting the cord, that's it, done. And I'm like, OK. <laughs> You've never had a say in it. No. Which, it's my mum at the end of the day. I want to be the one what's cutting Harry's cord as well, which she's agreed on, and so is Clint. As long as I get to hold him. Yeah, she'll be probably the first one to hold him, or I know what my mum's like. It's very hands-on. So, let me just sort the bed for you. If you've got a baby that's back-to-back, that baby's head, so the diameter of the head that's trying to get into the pelvis to come back out the other side, is a lot bigger. We don't live together at the moment because I don't think we'd cope with each other at the moment. Cause it, no. It's gone too fast as our relationship, so... Try and pull back a bit. Slow down a little bit. But I live at home at the moment with my mum. And I'm going to have to baby's born as well, so... But he'll be down every day, I know him. <laughs> Instinctively, you'll lean forward and put all your weight through this. And then Clint can rub your back. So where you need to be, Clint, is really low down. I've changed a few nappies before, so I know how to put them on, take them off and put them in a bag, or throw them in the bin. <laughs> but that's Mummy's job. Pooey nappies. I changed the wet ones. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you need to almost put constant pressure on there either side, so just thumbs there and just press. So if you try it now. I'm second eldest of 11 children. Being in a big family, you grow up watching your dad look after little children. And you just think, am I going to be able to do it? To be honest, I think I'll be able to do as good a job as what my dad did for me. So just hopefully I can live up to the expectations of what people think. Listen, listen, you're just in a stage called transition. Have you heard about it? It's where women just temporarily lose their mind, OK? If I said to you I could cut your legs off and make it stop, you'd probably let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> When mums see their daughters in pain, they understand why they're in pain. They understand that it's a necessary pain. I mean, they don't like it, they probably don't like it any more than the partner does having to watch them in that kind of pain. But they understand that it's a finite amount of pain, it's productive, and it's not going to kill them. I thought we were too late to have an epidural at this stage. I won't bother, Clara. Carry on as you are doing. You're doing really yes. well. I know, sweetheart. It might hurt, but... But you're doing really well. Do you want me to check to see if it is just that the head's come down and you're fully dilated, or do you want me just to get an epidural? No, you can check, check first. Please. Are you sure? Yes. Can you see your baby's head there? If he's literally just there, I might as well keep going. Really yeah. proud of you, Claire. You're awesome. 
You just push if you need to. <laughs> Little Harry there. Hello, Harry. And he's ginger. <laughs> I didn't like to see. Look at him. She's a caring person, is Claire. Very caring person. I think she's going to be a good mum. I really, really do think Claire's going to be a good mum. So, did you want to cut the cord? If you don't mind, To be a dad is to be a role model for somebody and to actually teach somebody and show them what to do. And now, Grandad, how are you doing? <laughs> Alright, she's had him. He looks like her with ginger hair. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. He's been really good with her, really good. Looking a little bit. I suppose it means everything to be a mum. You've got to put somebody before yourself who's going to idolise you, really. I idolise my mum. <laughs>